there's a, you know, combinations of things that, that just make absolute sense, and traveling is, is, is something for the senses, and uh, it's, it's, you get a, an emotional reaction to being in a new place, to experiencing a new culture, to tasting uh, a new flavor. So, um, to me, the travel takes me all over the place, which is fantastic. It lets me have these wonderful uh, emotional experiences. I get to photograph those things. Those photographs bring back the memories flooding back years after I've taken them, and no one can take that away from me. I'm Ken Kamineski. I am a travel photographer from Montreal, Canada. One of my favorite images that brings back an interesting memory was a shot of the boathouse at Maline Lake in Jasper National Park. Um, it was a late evening shot around sunset, just after sunset. There was not a soul around and it was almost a creepy kind of a feeling. It gave me like visions of Friday the 13th movies, but it was also surreally beautiful because this lake house was illuminated in this beautiful incandescent light. And with HDR, it was able to pull out the still the remaining daylight in this and have a blue sky and the clouds show up. And as I was taking that shot, I had to run around in circles as my camera was on the tripod taking long exposures because the mosquitoes were so voracious that they were bleeding me dry. Ah, to be a travel photographer. I, I worked in Mexico a lot, so I found a producer who uh, was able to do a fantastic job for me, uh, and mostly in the Yucatan area, so I'd shoot a lot in Tulum um, and a lot in Merida. And uh, one of the days that uh, we didn't uh, have our talent show up, so we decided to go scouting that day, and, and uh, we found this beautiful rune in the middle of the jungle that there was no one around, and the only person I shot there was my producer, who stood there with a little backpack in front of this rune, and that was actually the first day that I started shooting HDR. So that's an interesting memory for me. The reason I'm shooting HDR now is, is several reasons, actually. Um, one, out of necessity. You cannot get the kind of clear images inside beautiful locations with dim lights like these beautiful mosques and cathedrals. There's no way that just with a regular camera and tripod you're going to be able to get that kind of depth and dynamic range. Um, so right away, that's a wonderful reason. When you shoot nature and landscape, you're so limited shooting normally, quote unquote, that you're given a few hours at the beginning of the day at sunrise and maybe, you know, again, a couple of hours at the end of the day at sunset to be able to get magic hour. Um, whereas with HDR, during a cloudy day, you've got all day long to be able to shoot beautiful scenes. And some of my better images are even shooting close to noon. Impossible otherwise. So I'm trying to give myself the opportunity to take as many good pictures as possible, and HDR provides that for me. One of the funnier ones is, is, is the image that I took that ended up landing on the cover of National Geographic. Uh, it was my first day in Paris, and I went to Notre Dame Cathedral, it was around Christmas time. And I pulled out my tripod and started taking a couple of pictures, and all of a sudden security came down on me, and I was a little upset about that, and grinding my teeth and walked out and thought, okay, at least I'll go and uh, take some photographs of the exterior. And I just put the camera on the tripod, took a quick snap, came home. As I was editing the images, didn't even think twice about adding that one into my archive or even processing the image. I did in the end, and eventually that was what ended up on the cover of National Geographic. So the lesson to be learned is always go ahead and take that extra shot. You know, never take the chance that, you know, you're not going to be there again or that sometimes when I get home, the shots that I thought were going to be the most beautiful um, turn out to be rather, in my opinion, mundane and others that I did just like that a as a second thought turn out to be winners, whether they're in my eyes or in someone else's. Uh, and more often than not, I'd prefer it to be in someone else's because that's who I'm shooting it for. Uh, 
this is a commercial art and I'm quite cognizant of that and I'd like to make sure that my work is appreciated by others and I think any artist wants that too. One of the things that a lot of people who want to get into photography don't really understand at the get-go is that the majority of your time is not going to be spent taking pictures. It's actually going to be doing the minutia of, of running a business and doing paperwork and doing image editing and branding, just like corporations do. You have to, you have to be memorable to people. You have to expect that if you make an introduction, you have to have some kind of impact, whether it be an online introduction, whether it be a face-to-face -face meeting, whether it be a telephone call. All of these things, I think, need to have some kind of structure to it where there's a similarity to it, there's a feel to it, there's a comfort level to it. Having a website, a blog, business cards, promotional material, all that kind of stuff that blends in together that has that kind of similar feel to it that when you actually present someone with something, they may actually have already seen that brand and go, oh, I know who you are. People have that kind of absolute beautiful reaction to wanting to go somewhere that's been photographed beautifully. Uh, and I think we can all relate to that, whether it's a, you know, beautifully filmed, beautifully photographed, uh, or even beautifully spoken about. Uh, you know, if you got Morgan Freeman talking. Uh, <laughs> so I think that that's where photography comes in. It's just, it's an open book to, to having adventures by sitting on your couch.